Thanks. <laughs> Hi, guys. This is a big, loud crowd. <laughs> you guys hear me okay in the back? All good? Okay, cool. Who's, uh, who's here for the first Hackfest? That's awesome. Thanks, guys, for coming. This is my fourth Hackfest. Uh, they keep asking me to come back. I don't know why. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I try to make it fun every time and do something interesting and new. Hackfest is like my favorite place to try out new talks or new things that I've been working on. Um, who's seen me present before at Hackfest? Wow. <laughs> I think that's the largest response I've ever gotten. That's really cool. So thanks. Who's here to see this just because it's me and they have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, I am sorry to disappoint. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, Hackfest is one of my favorite places to present new material, like I said. Uh, and I wasn't actually intending on speaking here this year. I didn't have anything ready for this. Uh, most of my research I've been doing in the past year, my last company is all under NDA, and I couldn't really talk about it publicly. Uh, and then Patrick hit me up, and he said, hey, I noticed you didn't uh, submit anything for Hackfest this year. What's, what's going on? We kind of needed some English speakers. And I said, oh, you know, I told him I didn't really have anything prepared, so I was just going to skip it this year. And he said, well, are you working on something, anything, maybe? And I said, well, I've been playing around with scraping this Venmo public feed. And he goes, oh, I was hoping someone would talk about that. Get it in. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't have it. I don't really have any, you know, anything ready yet. And then he was like, sounds good. You've got a couple of months. <laughs> we'll get you in here. So I said, OK, because I can't say no to Patrick. And I love Hackfest. Um, so a little bit about me really quick is up there. I don't, I don't have to read you guys. Um, I'm currently uh, a director of field engineering for Casada. Uh, we stop bots on the internet. We are the best at stopping bots on the internet. I will say that out loud in person to anyone, and I challenge anyone to prove that wrong. Um, I'm openly always looking for people to try and bypass our automated tool defense systems. Um, we're really cool. If you work for a company that needs to defend against scrapers, botnets, scalpers, uh, anything of that nature, uh, pretty much any kind of automated tool system, be it curl, phantom JS, what have you, uh, we can take care of that for you. So go ahead and hit me up later. I'll have some cards up here. Um, on the left there, you've got my kind of general way that I worked my way up through security over the past 12 plus years. Started as a network engineer, made my way all the way through penetration testing. Uh, my last position, I was an industrial security researcher, uh, which was really cool and sad and terrifying. And I don't recommend anyone do it. Uh, and now, this is what I'm doing. You got my links on the right. Um, I'm real popular on Twitter. I yell at the internet there a lot. Feel free to take pictures throughout this engagement. I don't mind. Feel free to post them on Twitter. I really like that. It helps people get the word out. And uh, I post all my code and slide decks and things like that to the Twitter. So that's a great place to keep an eye on me. Um, I'm going to go through a script that I wrote for this whole thing later. That script is going to be on my GitHub, which is down here. Um, how cool is this? I just love this thing. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, this is a very like nutrient dense talk, so I'm going to race through this to so try and bear with me. Feel free to take pictures of any of the slides for information you want later. Um, I was I'm working with an application here called Venmo. It's a mobile payment app that's extremely popular in the U.S. And it wasn't until about four days ago that I realized it doesn't exist in Canada, and no one here is going to have any idea what the hell I'm talking about. So I, had to th I threw some slides together to tell you guys how big of a deal this thing is. Um, keep, bear in mind through this entire thing, this is US only. So uh, about 23 million users, uh, in, in, in this active users in 2018. Um, it is the most used mobile payment application by millennials specifically. And we're going to find out why that is in a couple of minutes. Um, it's actively accepted at retailers, both brick and mortar and online, by about 2 million of them. It's a huge, huge, huge mobile payment app. Um, why do we need another mobile payment app? We've got you know, PayPal, we've got all of the banking apps, we've got Apple Pay, we've got Google Wallet. How the heck did Venmo expect to get into this market? Um, they did it with social engineering and cartoons. This concept of getting people to pay you money if they owe you money um, is always an awkward situation. Um, if you, you, something as basic as like, hey, splitting a pizza, or like, I'll pick up dinner and you can pay me back later, uh, and then a week goes by and they've never paid you, it's always an awkward conversation to have. Um, Venmo fixed this by having 
um, a communication mechanism built into the app that is like super emoji intensive to the extent that uh, when you're typing within the text boxes in the app itself, it will recommend emoji for you to use, not just based on your own like keyboard ro emoji recommendations. Uh, and so they, they turn something into, hey man, where's my 20 bucks? into fun little emoji, and then everybody's happy and cutesy, and then they kick you the 20 bucks and you get paid. Um, and also, this, of course, devolved into great ways to pay your drug dealers. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk a lot about that. And so, yeah, uh, they, got to, they, they busted their way into the mobile payment market by just being cutesy and fun and making it way less awkward to get money from people. Um, here's their payment volume as of Q3, $17.5 billion have been transferred through Venmo. 17 and a half billion. And increasing by about the same amount, quarter after quarter after quarter. We're starting in Q1 2017 down there, for those of you who can't read that. Um, it's the number four most used uh, P2P payment app. This is particularly interesting to me, because uh, we've got you know, Venmo down here, number four. Um, bank banking apps, all banking apps combined, uh, and that's your general banks like Chase and your Bank of America and whatever the heck you have up here. Um, all those combined end up, at, end up at number three, but I thought it was really weird that Facebook Messenger is the number one most used mobile payment app. I don't get it. Maybe for the same reason that Venmo got popular, you can be super cutesy and send emojis to the Facebook Messenger, but there it is. Um, so yay, who everyone likes statistics, right? This is fun. Do you guys want me to do like 60 more slides of <laughs> financials on Venmo, or do you want me to get to the hookers and blow? Let's, I know what you want. So we're, we're talking about uh, the API that exists in here. Um, the API, and I can show you guys, in fact, that's what I'll do. Um, it's easily accessible through a web browser, which is really cool, except that it has a whole lot of limitations in it. Let me see how I can do this this way. Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to show you guys what Venmo looks like, too. So this is it um, for you guys who haven't used Venmo before. Uh, any, anyone from the US here? Let me just get like a, yeah, it's a real small number. Um, have you guys used, anyone used Venmo? All right, cool. Uh, so, so Venmo hit, hit the media in, uh, in the summer last year when Vice and a few others discovered that there's this public feed over here. See, these are your, your, your feeds. You got friends, mine, public. Oh, I disabled my internet and I totally broke this entire talk now. Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can fix this for you. Okay. Um, so there's a public feed that goes on, and everyone freaked out because by default, when you sign up for a new account and you make any payments, uh, this public feed, it, it posts to this public feed. And that, that was crazy to people. Oh, now I've got to sign in for you. This is time we don't have, right? Uh, uh, ding, ding. Okay, so here's our public feed. Let's check this out. Uh, I don't know any of these people. And these are people paying other people for serum, <laughs> uh, a whole lot of bread, more bread. Uh, and so this, is, this became very interesting because you see terms like bread come up a lot and you go under, well, why, why are there so many people talking about bread? Um, you see food, you see pizza a lot. And I'll, I'll show you some stats later uh, when I was able to do some searching. and. Um, it, this, this is fascinating. You can scroll through this forever and H. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween din din. You're, yeah, this is probably, you know, haircut and uh, women. Yeah, so uh, it, it, it gets weird. Um, so that's, that's what the public feed looks like. And this has been like this forever. Since Venmo's inception, that was its whole thing of making a social aspect out of transferring money, making giving money, passing money around uh, fun with your friends. Uh, and so they got called out on this public feed and just displaying everything that you're spending money on to the entire world really easily, um, allowing things like, I can see how much you're paying for utility bills, and uh, I won't get into that. But we don't want people to see what we're spending money on. You know, it's one thing to like be transferring money to friends, but you got to remember, you can pay, like I said, utility bills with this. You can buy things online with this. And a lot of those online retailers and in, uh, brick and mortar retailers post that information to the public feed. Some of them literally post like exactly what you bought. They'll take the text from your receipt, throw it in this public feed. And 
I know everyone in this room is kind of a privacy advocate, but how many people we do, do we know that don't understand that social media and things like that are publicly accessible by default and what that means? You know, public doesn't mean, oh, just to the general people that I know, but to the entire world, including somebody who may be trying to uh, build a personal framework about me in order to blackmail me for something later, stalk me, if they see, oh, I get coffee at the same place every Tuesday and Thursday on my way somewhere, they can wait for me there for some reason. Um, things like that, it's super creepy. And it's not like thrown in your face that there's a problem with something being public. It's just like you're aware that there's this public feed. Um, Venmo's stance on it is that's how we operate and that's one of our big things. We're gonna keep doing it unless our users get super uppity about it and so far they haven't. Um, in the meantime, Venmo has a couple of APIs I was able to discover. Um, the fact that there's two of them was particularly interesting. Uh, and they have some very slight annoyances to them. I think I'll just skip right over to it. Um, you can't, like it says here, you can't just, you, you can't just W get this. You're gonna get locked out. Uh, depending on which API you're using, you get locked out immediately. You get one request and then you're done, which seems bad for an API. And I was trying to figure out why that is and I'm gonna, we're gonna play along and get the play-by-play -play and eventually figure out why that is. Uh, so there's the two APIs I was able to discover appear to be like a version one and a version five. Um, the version one appears to be, uh, and by, keep in mind I had no contact with Venmo through any of this, so I had not for everything based on research and just poking at things a lot and making some educated guesses. Version one appears to be an app developer API that they've since discontinued around 2016, but is still open facing the internet and responding to requests. They may have done this because old apps still exist and they want to be able to uh, allow those customers to still be supported. Um, but it's been a while and you'd think they would have maybe rolled them all off of there by now. But uh, no, it's still out there. Um, it does do a lot of really intense throttling. However, I noticed if you uh, go into the developer's site, which still exists, and request an API access token, which still exists, um, that throttling goes way down. If you submit that you know, API request token with every API request, makes total sense, very normal situation. Um, getting that API token through the normal web browser interface, I'll show you that in a minute, is annoying. It's a lot of clicking and uh, responding to two-factor requests and refreshing pages, and if you get locked out, you have to wait a long time, and it's just an awful experience. So if you're trying to scrape an ocean of data like I was trying to do, um, you're still getting locked out even with this API token and you have this delay of minutes to hours depending on what you're up to before you can start again and it just rends renders the whole process awful. Um, I found a beta API for the V1 and like the, the beta like dev API still appears to be facing the internet as well which seems super weird to me. Um, and then I think for, for this one, the worst part of it is it uses this snowflake. Anyone's familiar with Twitter's snowflake trend? Uh, IDs, the Snowflake system. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. Uh, it makes actually trying to get chronological lists of data from the public feed super annoying. Uh, so uh, V1 opposed to V5 here. V5 um, does not appear to care about API tokens. I'm pretty sure V5 is what the actual Venmo app uses. So they have something in place detecting if you're using the app or not, and if you're not, it's just, it'll give you one response and then you're just absolutely dead. Um, it, uh, this was interesting, it uses epoch time for pagination, and that's always weird when you come across it. Um, you can see that up here, like, uh, on, this is an epoch. It took me a minute to figure that out because it's not a transaction ID, and I was like, well, what are they doing here? Uh, and then someone had pointed out, like, is that epoch time? And I said, you're a nerd. And, and, and I think you're right. And uh, sure enough, it is. So like for some reason, they're using Epoch Time and the V5, and it actually turns out, I think that has something to do with the Snowflake pagination I was talking about earlier, but I'm not sure. Um, that's uh, the one cool thing I found out about the, the V5 here is that uh, I can abuse an a certain uh, authorization section of it to get API tokens on the fly, even though the V5 doesn't use API tokens or care about them, there's a weird delivery me mechanism of them inside of it that I think is accidental or unused, uh, and then you could bounce that off of the V1, and I'll get through all this in a second, so don't worry about it. Um, so uh, if, if you're using the old V1 API, uh, Venmo thinks that's weird 
because it is, because almost no one is using it. Um, I, my account is still actually frozen. <laughs> so don't use your personal account. Uh, you're not going to be able to get your money. <laughs> or don't put money in that personal account. Um, this is some, some interesting conversations that they had sent to me. Um, I had only re realized recently that they said, hey, reset your password and then email us back, and then we'll talk about unfreezing your account. Um, I've done that, and they have not gotten back to me about the talk about unfreezing your account part yet. Uh, I don't have my money. So <laughs> make sure you're aware of what you're doing. Um, if you want to get a new, account, uh, 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 new, a new account created in order to uh, just constantly make new accounts and ping the API that way, just spin up a bunch of IPs, make a ton of new accounts, and then just request until the API locks you out, and then call it a day and get new accounts. Um, that's really hard because you have to go through several clicks and it makes you confirm your identity via SMS two-factor. Um, and it verifies that you're using a real phone number, which sucks too if you don't have like a huge list of real phone numbers or can at least guess at that. Um, so again, super, it super gets in your way if you're trying to dump an ocean of data and you constantly get blacklisted. Uh, so they have a lot of controls in place that were making this very difficult. Uh, so uh, it's looking like maybe the whole public getting uppity about, oh, people can dump an entire year's worth of data from the public feed and see what I've been doing everywhere is kind of unfounded. I could not find a way to do it. So I was like, okay, I spent like two weeks on this and I said, well, this isn't getting anywhere. Um, PayPal, who owns Venmo, has a bug bounty. Hey, let me try to see what goes on there, see if I could find anything. Um, and I just completely gave up on, on scraping the API at that point. I said, all right, cool, you guys are doing something good, I guess. Uh, what else is going wrong? Um, so uh, this is the token generation page. This is where you go to get your API token. It's hidden down in like this developer section, um, which it, it, it's, it's weird that it exists because they're not accepting new applications from developers. You're not allowed to create your own apps anymore. There's no reason for this to still exist. There's no reason for it to still issue access tokens to you, but it does. Um, but it, uh, first off, this, this token lasts about 30 minutes, and then it blacklists itself, and you have to come back here, and you have to reapply for a new one. Um, by that point, you, your login session is timed out, so you have to uh, re-authenticate, do your two-factor, request a new token, get that token, plug it back into your script or whatever you're using to try and dump the API, and then either you're going to get blacklisted again in 30 minutes, or you're going to do something dumb and it's going to blacklist you before that, and then you have to come back here and do all this again. Super annoying, um, but I'm just looking for bugs now in this page, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. What is this? <laughs> I'm glad you guys know what that is. What do we call this? When the thing up here looks like the thing down here. No, we, we call it uh, a reflected cross-site scripting. Um, and basically, it means anything you stick in that URL bar up here is on the page. And so you can do some really fun stuff like this. So I can craft like probably kind of some you know, more obfuscated URL, send that off to like a known Venmo user who I think is trying to use the dev portal at least and say, uh, hey, here you go, paste this malicious link into your browser, and uh, they do at least escape HTML tags and things like that, so I can't throw a link right in there, but this looks pretty legit, right? Like, oh, for security purposes, okay, that makes sense that I have to do something odd. And like one of the first things we're told, you know, for you know, avoiding email phishing and stuff is like, don't click the links, copy and paste it into a new browser window. So this is kind of like very expected user behavior. This isn't asking someone to do something odd, but um, PayPal thought that that was just completely off the wall. Um, Long story short, this is them turning down my bug bounty for that one, because they said, oh no, that's, that's bizarre, that no user would ever fall for that, that's ridiculous. Okay, so there you guys go, you can have that one. It's, PayPal doesn't give a shit, so it's yours now. <laughs> um, aside from that, I was like, all right, well, you, you pretty much look at all the pages that kind of have interactive input. Let me get my mouse here so I could stop this. So what I'm doing here is, uh, I'm just signing up for a new account. I'm using crap data. I'm using uh, a phone number that has a known area code and prefix that I know is going to be valid. And then I'm just trying random last fours until I get one that hasn't already been plugged into the system. And uh, just using Chrome inspect here to see what comes back. And uh, so here I'm at the part where you have to confirm your identity. So like it doesn't create a new account until you've definitely confirmed that you own the phone number that you're saying here, right? This is all very normal. We see this all the time. Um, Looking at the responses that I get back here, and I have, oh, who's this, anybody see that? I know, that's really tiny up here. I'm going to call this out. So, so bear in mind here, this is, I haven't confirmed this account yet. 
Uh, and yet, we're looking at an API access token in a response header, so nowhere on the page, but for some reason, this server shoots us back an API access token for an average user just trying to create a new account. Uh, and that might end up being used towards the app or something like that. The app, when you log in, probably inherits that and punches that into itself in the back end, and that's the like one that doesn't expire. Um, but we've got a problem here because I have shortened the time it takes to start up a new account and get that API access token by an exceptional amount of time because I don't have to go through the rest of this crap. Uh, there it is. So, yeah. Within essentially submitting a single form in a script, I can get API access tokens. We're back in. Let's, uh, let's write a script. So I wrote a script. And I'm going to give this script to you guys so you can have all the fun that I was having. Because uh, I haven't had a ton of time to actually gather oceans of data, because it actually still takes an immense amount of time. Um, it, it, for, even with the gargantuan number of servers I spun up to start scraping this using this method, I still was not able to scrape data as fast as it comes into Venmo. So if you want to scrape, and then even going backwards, it was taking me longer than the amount of time I was scraping for, i.e. if I wanted to scrape a month's worth, it would take me about five weeks. And that's insane. That's an insane amount of data. So I, I was able to get about six weeks of data from this IP, uh, from, uh, from this API, and it was uh, it's about three gigs worth. Um, but it's all JSON. It's an immense amount of items. I have to still build out like a Cassandra cluster just to be able to do some good correlation, correlation attribution. But anyway, here's the script. Um, I hope you guys can see this. I'll only go through the interesting parts. I'm not going to read you my code line by line, because I know you love that at cons. Um, <laughs> It's just really funny, so I wanted to point some things out here. Uh, so your variables up here, uh, your, your, I asked for the last four, four digits of a telephone line. That's where it starts. And then if that one already has an account associated with it, uh, it just increments by one. Um, your before IDs and after IDs would just have to do with where you want to start within the timeline. And you can figure out where to start and stop uh, based on uh, just punching the initial API right in your browser and just looking for these, and this is your, it's pretty obvious. I'm not going to read this to you guys. But uh, yeah, so all of this is random, random username, random password. Doesn't matter. You never have to use it again, so you don't even have to store these, because all we're trying to do is create a new account, get the IP, API token, uh, and get to work, because you don't need credentials to hit the API. You just need this token, and you're done. So you don't have to store any of this. Um, there's a weird client ID that's required in the, in the uh, post headers. Don't know what it does. Usually it's 10, so I just use 10 all the time. Play around with it. Um, <laughs> see, see what you get. Uh, I definitely found that 110 and 28, 9, 2899 are all valid, but I, don't, I didn't seem to get any different responses based on those. But I don't know. That's a fun thing you guys can do. Um, the, uh, <laughs> here's more telephone lines. So uh, yeah, this is all just garbage. This is me submitting the form that you were looking at before that gets right before the account confirmation. Um, I, I, so I did notice, this is, this is uh, great. Um, here's the part of it here where it just starts incrementing the telephone line if, if it fails to get anything. Uh, if you try to use the same phone number twice, uh, even after it was successful the first time, you didn't confirm the account, it still marks that phone number as having an account. So by doing this, we are effectively blacklisting an ocean of potential Venmo users. <laughs> um, so far, I haven't found that that list gets cleared out ever yet, <laughs> because I have to keep coming up with like new ranges of telephone numbers that are valid. So sorry, not sorry. That's, I, I don't know what to tell you. That's not, that's not my fault, but it's kind of my fault. Um, I, I've probably blocked out a couple thousand people, maybe more, um, in the Chicago area code area. <laughs> Um, yeah, then it just gets a new API token, and uh, so I'm going to point this out here. It's using the V5. Where's my, where's my good one? Um, we're using the V5 uh, API to do account creation, uh, which, like I said, I'm pretty sure is the one the official Venmo application uses. Uh, but then, because V5 doesn't actually seem to care about that API token for some reason, or I just don't know how to submit it in a way that it expects, because these are undocumented APIs. This is me trying to reverse something over, you know, at nights and weekends when I'm bored. Uh, 
the, we feed it to the V1 API, which seems to love it. So that's really weird too, that like tokens from one API working for a really old one. Maybe not weird, I don't know if that's what's going on. Um, I like to add a few HTTP headers in when I do stuff like this, just to try and make it look more legitimate. Um, there's even more I could add in there. Uh, I like to get, drop the cache control down to zero just to, be, to make sure I'm getting fresh data. Um, and the DNT just sometimes dumps a lot of the tracking cookies, which makes it harder for them to determine if you're a bot or not. Um, if you really want to dodge bot detection, and this is in general, not just with the Venmo API, but if you're scripting something uh, and you're pinging web servers and you're trying to avoid Akamai or Distill or whoever discovering that you're using automated tools and you're not an actual human being, one of the best things you can do is this one, Distill hates this one weird trick. You, <laughs> Uh, randomize these headers. Randomize the order that you submit the HTTP headers in. Uh, and then if you want to get really funny, randomize the data that's inside of them as long as you can validate that the data you're providing is still accepted by the web server. Um, but I found in a ton of cases, and we're talking you know, companies as big as Akamai, simply randomizing the order in which you submit HTTP headers will eliminate the detection system's ability to think that you're a bot because it thinks you're something completely new because the headers came in in a different order. And that's impossible to do, right? Like, no, how, do you, how can you randomize the order of HTTP headers? That's, that's bananas. Uh, so yeah, pro tip, if you want to bypass a lot, if your companies are using bot detection mechanisms in front of your web servers, just try that if you want to prove that they don't work. Um, and then call me at Casada and I'll come take care of it <laughs> because we don't fall for that garbage. Um, Moving on, this just reads all the feed, uh, determines if you got a good request or not. If, and it, the, the APIs are really cool in that they give you like solid HTTP responses based on what's going on. You're either gonna get a 429 uh, or you're gonna get a 200. Uh, and that's it. And if it gets a 429, it just waits, goes, gets a new token, tries again. If it gets a 200, it dumps the data into wherever, and you're done. So that's the whole script. I'm not gonna walk you through like line by line. That's what it does. This will be up on my GitHub uh, either tonight or tomorrow and you guys can throw it on a trillion AWS servers and play with it and see what you find. We'll find some stuff in a little bit. Please do, and like, if you find some cool stuff, let me know and we'll talk about it. I had a blast just sitting down here last night with a bunch of people going through our findings going, what the fuck does this mean? Uh, and I'll, I'll put those up later because I know that's why you guys are here. <laughs> um, all right, let's get, let's get out of this and go back to what I was doing. Um, yeah, so. Uh, we wrote our script, we started firing our way, I am dumping the crap out of the Venmo API as fast as I possibly can, right? And it, everything's just going super smooth, except that it's really not. Um, the Snowflake distribution me mechanism that I'm pretty positive the API, well not the API, but actual Venmo uses, uh, is a means of generating tens of thousands of transaction ID numbers on the fly uh, and making sure that they're unique, yet still being able to distribute them uh, in a highly available mechanism across all of the multiple nodes that um, Venmo, Twitter, whoever uses. So basically, if a request, you know, a new transaction posts to a single node because that's how it works, that node has to have a transaction ID that it can assign to that transaction immediately and know that the transaction ID it has is not going to be used by any other node in the cluster because uh, it has to be able to do that without talking to the other nodes because just the, the time it takes to talk to the other nodes increases the amount of time that it takes that transaction to get uh, created and posted. That creates a bad user experience. You want this to be as instantaneous as possible, not have this latency of like, well, let me ask all 7,000 of my friends if they have this transaction ID yet, wait for all those responses, and then if they, one of them says yes, then I have to think of a new number and then ask them all again. It's terrible. So without getting like into deeply into the technical aspect of how Snowflake works, that's it. The problem with that is that if you're pinging a single API over and over and over and over and over from a specific location, chances are you're hitting the same small number of nodes versus the entire cluster that runs all of Venmo. So you're not actually going to be getting in transactions in um, a sequential uh, or even chronological order. Uh, and without having without scraping enough data from enough nodes to have a whole sequential list of these transaction IDs, you're never really sure if you're gathering all of the data available for even the specific time period that you're doing. Basically what you have to do is keep scraping over and over until you absolutely stop getting, non, or stop getting unique 
transactions. And that can take forever, and it's awful, and you're going to burn through a whole lot of poor people's phone numbers who can now never use Venmo. Not my problem. <laughs> um, the, the process of getting the new API token has its own delay. So like, if you get blocked, you, you can dump the API really fast, but then once your token gets blacklisted, then you have to wait, go post that form, get the token, and come back. And that can be, uh, that's several seconds, which is an insane amount of time when you extrapolate it out to the fact that I was running this for about six weeks. Um, yeah, sorry, everyone ever about your phone numbers. Um, they're definitely still doing IP throttling, so you have to have your own subsystem set up to constantly cycle through APIs. That can get expensive, uh, depending on what systems you're using. I found that there's some really, really cool um, companies out there that will lease you residential IPs by the thousands. And nobody's going to blacklist residential IPs because that's your customers. I'm talking like, who's your big ISP up here? Bell? Are, are you going to block the entire Bell ASN at your company? You can't. So for quite a price, you can get a few thousand residential IPs that just can't be blocked, or at least can't be blocked for any extended period of time, uh, unless there's a really dumb guy running your WAF, which is common. So what are you going to do? Um, one final thing I ran into that, that was a real bummer is I'm pretty sure that they have a cold storage system for really old transactions. Uh, it, and so it ended up being like excruciating numbers of seconds, like six to 10 seconds to get any transaction older than two weeks. That's awful. That's way longer than account creation time. So that, aside from anything else, like that really puts the kibosh on the concept of OMG, they're going to dump an ocean of our data and they're going to find out everything about every American ever based on, you know, in a few seconds they can get the entire, uh, all the data for 2018. That's just not possible. That was my, my original intention. When I was talking to Patrick, I said, yeah, I'm going to dump all of 2018 and we're going to find some cool shit and it's going to be weird. It's just not possible. Um, you, well, everything's possible with enough resources. Um, me as a dude in my basement who didn't want to spend any money on this, not really possible. Um, but still, I was able to get about six weeks of data, which I think is a good, you know, subset of information. You can use that as like a good focus group. You know, it's millions and millions of transactions. So you're still going to find some, you know, cool examples of what's going on overall. Um, sorry about all this. I know this is why you guys came here. The hookers and blow. Um, this is a DM from Patrick. <laughs> it was like, this is all he wants. <laughs> so, but it's hard. Like, I have to do a lot of the legwork. When you guys see, you know, things like this that people pull out of public feeds, there's months of, like, really excruciating, boring crap like I just showed you to get to, the, like, the stupid fun bits. But the stupid fun bits always make it worth it. So uh, here's some fun things I learned. <laughs> Who's got kids <laughs> with phones? This is what the kids are talking about these days. Um, I, this, like, I thought this was really creative. Like, all right, trees, that's pretty obvious for weed. Like, I get that one. Um, any kind of crystalline uh, drug, a little diamond. Like, oh, that's pretty crafty. Well done. Um, spoons. Like, all right, Coke spoons. So you cook your heroin in your spoons. Um, spoons are also a, 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 an emoji referencing general, like, mental health and, like, payments for mental health or, like, a mental health day. Like, you'll see, like, little spa icons, like, you know, massage and a couple of spoons. And, like, someone was telling me, oh, that's, like, mental health day because there's this whole spoon theory regarding de depression and mental health. And you can Google that. I won't get into it because it has nothing to do with drugs. And that's not interesting. <laughs> um, this, I mean, you know, snow, skiing, powder, cocaine, funny. Uh, this one was super common, heart with lightning bolt. And so it's specifically these, these two emojis together. Heart with lightning bolt are these dudes. It's always MDMA or E. Uh, and I mean, these are, these are, you, you actually, I'm pretty sure anytime you see these, it's actually someone's fucking around. Like nobody actually. It's like, hey man, drugs. Like, but every time I think someone's not that dumb, I meet eight of them. So I mean, what are you going to do? Um, so that was really cool. Um, that I got this data based on uh, multiple transactions to or from a single individual by unique individuals. And what I mean by that is I was watching drug dealers. Anyone who's getting like a ton of this guy from a whole bunch of different people 
is probably selling MDMA. You know, because you're gonna get someone who's gonna like send it as a joke once in a while to a friend, and I would write off those one-offs, but like if someone's got 600 of these from unique user IDs, probably sling an E. So I make a note of his name, we, put a, we talk to him later. About the privacy dangers inherent in the <laughs> stuff. And you know who doesn't really care about personal privacy is people on, on E. So it's, it's a bad conversation overall. Um, one interesting thing, uh, Venmo decided to alert me on, even though they still haven't done anything about unlocking my account for me, uh, is, this is this came out about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, they specifically say, you are not allowed to mention narcotics, steroids, certain controlled substances, or other products that present a risk to consumer safety, drug paraphernalia, cigarettes. You can't even mention cigarettes on Venmo uh, that encourage, promote, facilitate, blah, 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 anyway. uh, stolen goods. Basically, you can't talk about anything illegal or controlled uh, in your posts. Um, it was weird because I saw a huge drop in that in the public feed as soon as this came out. And I said, oh, are they, they're probably filtering these. They're either blocking transactions when you have, when you just put like little drug emotions in there or they're completely block, or filtering it out on the back end after you post it. Um, we tested it last night and they're definitely not block, blocking new transactions that have drug references in them. Um, so we definitely sent a lot of drug references over the Hackfest network to Venmo. So have fun. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, and I was definitely finding them in the public feed, so I think they're just either really slow about filtering them out or just aren't devoting any time to, to it. And it ha they have a lot of users who first and foremost read the terms of service? Who are you people? Uh, and, are like, and then also get really freaked out by, the, by terms of service. Like, oh, I don't wanna make Venmo mad. Um, so, have a drink here. So that was really cool and fun. Um, but anyway, like we're here to talk about like the fun statistics. I know that you guys all wanted. Um, oh, you know, let me go back. I'm gonna show you some cool stuff about the API first, because it's been like too interesting for too long, and I wanna go back to the dry crap. So I'm talking way faster than I thought I was going to. Um, so this is what the two APIs look like. And when I was writing this script, there are some super annoying differences. And by the way, I wrote a v1 and a v5 script, and I'll have them both on my GitHub so you guys can play around and see if you could figure out like, why one locks you out and the other doesn't really. Um, you know when you're writing a script or some code and you've, like, you put a semicolon in the wrong place because you're used to writing JavaScript, but you're writing something in C, and it takes you like six days to figure out what the hell you did wrong because everything looks perfectly right? That's what these APIs will do to you. Because the, uh, the, uh, my favorite difference, which wrecked me for like two days, was uh, the V5 uses paging as the key, as the JSON key for figuring out like the pagination system. Uh, and so part of the script is you have to ask for the next page, next page, next page, next page, next page, until they're like, get out of here, and then you're dead. Um, the V1 uses pagination. I was down for days, like pinging people like, dude, can you help me with this? This used to work. I don't know what's going on. And it was because like I had just swapped these, these words in there. So you gotta look out for little things like that. Um, and over here, just the, like why would you mess with this layout? So the, the, the V5 uses venmo.com slash API slash V5. I found the V1 API just uh, by URL brute forcing, uh, at, it's just at api.venmo.com. Like they're both still up. And, and it, but it's api.venmo.com slash v1 slash stories. So if you're already doing like slash v1, why wouldn't you just do a slash v5 and throw your v5 in there? Um, I don't know. When I see things like this, sometimes it's because they bought a new uh, company and they just rolled it in and everything's annoying. Um, and then it does like slash stories. Uh, and there's, there's a bunch of other words you can plug in here that find interesting things that I wasn't going to get into and maybe I should have, but you guys can brute force that and have fun. Uh, and then you have the V1 I really want to use because it uses transaction IDs. That's a transaction ID. Um, and it, has, it, it forces an arbitrary limit of 20, but then what I do is I just change that on the back end, and I've found I can get about 100 per page, um, 
when you change it. Anything more in it, it'll just fall back to 100. I really want to figure out how to get this V1 to work because if you can just ask for strings of transaction IDs, you're bypassing that whole snowflake problem of not knowing if you ever had all the data, of not knowing where it starts and ends. But so far, I haven't been able to figure out how to make the V1 play nice without just completely shutting down everything ever. It's, it's super annoying. Um, and then, of course, uh, the V5 uses the, uh, the epoch time. Everyone knows what epoch time is, right? Unix epoch time? Look it up. <laughs> um, yeah, but other than that, the, the JSON output is still all the same, so that's, that's still cool. So everything else would still work. Um, this is, this is one, one request, one response to the request. This is the amount of data you get from one single request. It's an immense amount of data. Um, and so I, I ran into problems with just sifting through that. Um, you can you know, take your JSON and throw it into an SQL database. That takes a long time to do. Um, and then searching through that takes a lot of, it, it, there's a ton of disk IO just involved with this. And that's really what I was bumping up against. And now you're paying for, you know, VMs with solid state disks, and for something when you're just messing around, it can get rough. But um, it's easier to just throw three gigs, you know, a few weeks worth on your laptop and do it that way. But if you're going to try and dump an entire year, you start to get to the point where you need some legit compute resources to take care of that. Um, I'm at the point now where I'm going, all right, do A, do I want to keep dumping this? Do I really want to get the entire 2018 in here? And then if I do, like, I'm going to have to spin up like a Cassandra, a bunch of Cassandra nodes or something. Uh, so that's kind of crazy. Um, but anyway, back to the fun stuff. It's enough of that, right? I think I got like five minutes, so we're just going to have some fun. So there's you. Yay. I love Kermit. Um, oh, let me bring this one up. Sorry. <laughs> you tell, like, I'm still testing this talk out. I have the, uh, I brought it up in, yeah. So this is me just running a quick script to dump all my results and find the top 50 most repeated strings in Venmo. Uh, for the six month period. So this is mostly September and October that's in here. Let's try to make this bigger. And then I'll, I have a bigger one where I show you the emojis like you just saw. So far and away, like pizza. Like just pizza right out of the gate. Um, we'll talk about the emojis in a minute, but like pretty neat stuff, I guess. Re really, really average stuff. Lotto, like. 2,500 people talking about the lottery? Like, who's buying lotto tickets from other people that often? Is that weird? Or is that a thing? I don't know what that is. Company pools, yeah. Company pools maybe? OK, cool. See, I knew this would be fun because there's stuff that confuses me, and now we have like 300 of you in here that can kick your ideas around. Um, the, the text strings really weren't that interesting. It was the emojis that really got me. Um, so let's take a look at those. And this is, this is we were having a blast with this last night. Um, pizza, obvious. Thumbs up, you know. Whatever, it's such a default thing. Um, who knows what this one is? Shopping bags, bow tie, fortune cookie. Anyone? Positive guess? 3,600 people use this exact string in a six week period. What is that? 36,000. Or one person did it 36,000 times. I don't, I don't have the cluster set up yet to be able to like determine the unique IDs in that regard yet. Um, that it, I do, but it takes a long time. It's not a, I didn't have time for this. Anyway, soccer? Uh, this is the US. We only like soccer every four years. Uh, and this was a soccer year, but this was like way, I, I, I scraped this after the soccer time was done. I don't know what that's about. Uh, who knows what this character is? Please, somebody. Sorry. It's Korean. Say it louder. Okay, it's, so I, and I, I consult, this was really interesting because it's, it's five down. Um, it's sort of colloquially, I was told, means like boom, um, something that expresses like the noise boom, uh, but it's rarely just used by itself. And I, I, we couldn't figure out why this single character would be used 13,000 times other than a colloquial, colloquial, maybe like when you pay someone, you go boom, paid you. Um, but like, why are they using the Korean character? Bear in mind, this is US only, yes. Feminine body? Oh, man. Yeah. 
That's some CTF level shit. That's, <laughs> that's thinking way outside the box. That's. I don't know, I just work here. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, we're running out of time. Um, specifically for wine glasses. Like, very, these are exact strings that are repeated, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, uh, flowers, books. Like, this is a weird, again, exactly this string is used 4,000 times. Um, uh, lightning duck, personal favorite. <laughs> uh, about 4,000 people are really into lightning ducks. Anyone? Yeah, I don't know. Um, this, this explicitly long string of the emoji, uh, soccer tickets, so a lot of people must go to local games. I guess maybe we're still like excited and we're checking out our local teams. Uh, this is clearly electric bill. This is probably electric bill. This is definitely strippers. Uh, this is a weird one. Uh, airplane 100 dark moon face. What is this? 2,200 people. I don't know. <laughs> Mile high, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. They do have that weird lighting in the, the air, airplane bathrooms. It makes you look like that. I'll take it. Uh, this person, 1,200 people bought two shirts. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so these like weird, like long, explicit strings of emoji, I think, are either someone who definitely like ate out a lot in this period of time and paid the same place, and they just like this string just auto populates and like their their autocorrect or whatever. Um, or there are lots of apps that will use Venmo as a payment method, and like I said, will post strings to your public Venmo feed without you even knowing that they've done it. Uh, and so I think there's there's definitely one, and I. I think it was, oh, I know what it was. If I go back to this guy, and uh, I promise I'm almost done, but this is, uh, ooh, there he is. For bills on splitwise.com. Do you think 1,500 people literally typed that out? <laughs> or do you think splitwise.com posted that to their Venmo feed without them knowing? I think that's what happened, and so, that's a great indicator that there's a lot more going on. So it's not even a matter of you consciously being aware of what you are personally posting your Venmo feed. There's stuff going on behind the, in the background that you don't see. And even when you switch to your public feed, you don't see your transaction because in the microsecond that it took you to flip to the other tab, 27,000 transactions already have already surpassed yours and you'll never see it. Uh, so there's a lot being posted there you're not even aware of and that's, that's an awful scenario. Um, yeah, so this is fun. Uh, I'll put the script up in my GitHub, and you guys can dump a ton of data and just do a lot of grepping or whatever. If you want to build out like a Cassandra, like a huge SQL database and play with it, please do have some fun. Um, that's all I got time for today. I hope this was cool and interesting. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, this is my email address at Casada if you want to talk about stopping people like me from doing things like this. <laughs> that's why I work there. I'm good at it. Um, my GitHub's down there on the right. YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, you can take a picture of this slide, hit me up later. I'll be around HackFest the rest of the, uh, the weekend. Uh, I love HackFest, thanks for ha having me, and thanks for filling this room up for fourth year, this is really cool. Oh, I also sell ghosts on the internet. If you guys wanna buy ghosts, check out ghost.express. Ha, ha, ha.